everyone, and welcome to TFYLP, episode number 276, recorded February 10th, 2018, not 17, like the last time I tried to say 17, not 18. I am your host, Drawn Land, aka Weird Wolf. Along with me this evening is Headmaster Don. Hey, everybody. Christian Russell, aka Hello. Chip Chase. What? <laughs> Because you just look, you look just like Chip Chase, wheelchair and all. Sure. (laughs) It's like that progressive commercial. Hey, we look just alike. (laughs) (laughs) Sure, why not? (laughs) Also with us this evening is Michael Swift. What's up, everybody? Um, I apologize to everybody who's watching the live feed. Um, we, uh, we tried twice and apparently my internet tonight is utter shit. So I'm having to pre-record this and we are putting it up later. Um, and I apologize immensely, but thank you spectrum because my internet connection was just not cooperating, but hopefully we will, uh, get this one yeah. through and it will look fine and yeah. dandy and put a new hamster in the wheel. Yeah. Um, but I am working steadily on trying to get a new computer and hopefully that will help things. But I think tonight the internet was a culprit because it was just very, very slow. Um, and I'm hardwired, so it's not like, not like Wi-Fi was interfering. There's nobody else in the house that's on, (laughs) on the internet. So it is just crappy internet. Yeah. Complain to Spectrum not me. Anyway, tonight our special topic is uh, comic versus tune versus toy. I mix all that up all the time and (laughs) say it in a different way each time. Um, But I'm going to give you an example of what I'm talking about. Uh, Mainly in Masterpiece lately, uh, you know, the, the first few releases of Masterpiece started out with a mixture of, of, uh, original cartoon inflection but more detailed uh in the in especially in the vehicle modes a more detailed uh look now like with mp36 i'm sorry mp yeah mp36 megatron mp39 uh uh, sunstreaker heavily cartoon uh esque in their appearance uh the beast wars uh the primal the cheetor and the uh, uh oh, getting oh, feedback. feedback. Getting feedback. Yes. I can hear feedback. Can you still hear it? Yes. I don't know. Uh, I had no, just unmuted gone. my mic. It's gone. Um, it doesn't even seem to be picking me up. I don't know why. But anyway, um, the, uh, the Primal, the Cheetor, and the upcoming Dinobot, very heavily influenced uh, by the original show. Uh, you know, the, the toys are looking like they're just ripped right out of the cartoon. Uh, third parties, much like this uh, X-Transbots uh, Andros, uh, looks like the G1 Scourge, pretty much ripped right out of the cartoon. You know, uh, just absolutely gorgeous toy. Um, and a lot of people are huge fans of the look. I have to admit, I am. Uh, I personally lean very heavily to the cartoon aesthetic. Uh, although I see arguments where people would argue against the cartoon aesthetic, especially when you're referring to the G1 cartoon, because animation errors galore. <laughs> you know how many Optimus Primes with no mouse uh, mouthpieces, uh, Autobot Soundwave, uh, you know, scale. <laughs> um, scale. What's yeah. that? Uh, something that should never be spoken of in Transformers. Cool. Uh, but a good example uh, in the Generations line, or uh, as it were, uh, for example, Combiner Wars, you had the aerial bots uh, that were very heavily inspired by the original cartoon. Uh, you know, Slingshot, the, uh, the May Mayhem figure in Combiner Wars for the aerial bots, um, had a very cartoon look in the face. Uh, the overall design of the toy resembled the cartoon although you know air raid had cues from the toy 
Uh, but I think uh, the, those figures were very... They, they were a mix of toy and cartoon, but more leaning more toward cartoon, in my opinion. Um, then you have the Power of the Primes, like the Dinobots, for example. Uh, the Dinobots have a very toy G1 toy-inspired look to them, uh, with the clear plastic uh, seeing through to the golden bits underneath. Uh, very, very much a nod to the original toy aesthetic, um, while maintaining a... Uh, cartoon-esque in the robot forms uh, but they still have that very toy uh, toy centric appeal to them uh, tonight we're going to be talking about that uh, what makes each uh, aesthetic popular uh, what our uh, our favorite things are I also have some video that I recorded earlier today on the uh, at the Kentucky meetup in Louisville Kentucky uh, several of us uh, met at Boomba's Pizza on Hurstbourne Parkway, and uh, uh, I interviewed several of us there uh, and asked, what's your favorite uh, look in the designs of the toys coming up? Uh, Christian, whenever it comes to toy, uh, the appearance of a toy, what's your preference and why? Well, I came prepared to talk about Masterpiece Only. But when you mentioned the Aerobots and the Dinobots, I thought about reconsidering my answer. But then I realized it was the same. So what I would like from classic characters is to start by making the alt mode as realistic as possible. Then transform it into a character that looks cl as close to the cartoon as possible without getting rid of those realistic details. And then, if there's room, Easter eggs from the comic. Hmm. So you like a meld of all three. I do, but it's more like I prefer the way Sideswipe was in Masterpiece than Inferno was in Masterpiece, because Inferno lost all the realistic details. Yeah, he used, um, like, the flat panel. Room. Yeah, I hate it. I can't stand it. It's It looks awful. But Sideswipe looks good, because it looks like a licensed vehicle. And then you transform it into the character from the cartoon, and he looks almost exactly like he was in the cartoon, but brought into real life. Yeah, you know, and that's part of the reason, for example, the the Make Toys and uh, Hellfire, the reason I held on to it is because it has the very cartoon look in robot form. It's got the chunky uh, proportions, yep. but it has the high detail that carries yes. over from the vehicle form. I know there are people who are big fans of Masterpiece Inferno who just want rip the 2D design off the screen and put it on a toy. That's Inferno. But uh, that's not for me. Well, th there are there are great things about that particular toy. For example, the way the, the ladder folds up in his back. In I'll give it that. Uh, especially, and, and Grapple is the same way. Art Fire. Um mm -hmm. But whenever it comes to robot detail, there's just not much there. No. And at, a, at that price point, that was unacceptable to me. I sold it in a day, two days maybe. Hmm. But I didn't feel the same way about the Beast Wars masterpieces. When I got Primal and Shield War, I was like, wow, I'm really glad these guys look exactly like they came off the screen. But maybe it's because they had three-dimensional designs that were already rendered and looked real-ish. <laughs> Yeah, well, I think it depends on what media a character has had. Um, yeah. Because I'm sort of like, I kind of agree when it comes to like G1 characters. Uh, an optimist that somehow captures cartoon, comic, whatever else, all in one, is more appealing to me than something that captures just the one or the other. But then Beast Wars, it really only ever had the cartoon. There was no comics for it. Or Except like for that. the Dream so Wave, It looks like it's count. walked out of the cartoon <laughs> is great to me. That's a good point. I think I think that's how I feel, too. How about you, Don? Well, well y'all both touched on uh, things that I was thinking about myself. Because I think for me, it's like what you were saying. 
the way the character looks, he needs he or she needs to be represented in the media that they're from. It's like you need Drift to look like Drift from the comics because if he doesn't look like Drift from the comics, he's not Drift. Right. You know, you know, you could you know, there's that. Uh, just to use a more a more recent example. Um so like Optimus Primal because he does look like, as you said, Michael, he just steps right out of the, right off the screen. Him and Cheetor, well, Cheetor's beast mode notwithstanding, but the robot mode. I mean, it looks like what you would expect to see stepping out of the screen. But well, you also can't forget about uh, uh, Masterpiece Dinobot that turns into a Velocigaptor. <laughs> I, yeah. I've just come to the, I've come to accept that to get the perfect robot mode and the masterpiece beast wars line i'm gonna have crappy beast forms yeah it's i mean it's it's something uh, you're going to but i mean for, they're not that bad yeah it's, it's no really- i mean like but i mean at least with dinobot they are not covering it up uh because with cheetor if, if you go back and look at all the promotion images before cheetor was ever released they always took it at every angle that didn't show the gaps yeah. and like the robot bits sticking out and so it was like oh it's look it looks so great it's, and then i got it and i'm like i can't hide the parts of his arm that are inside of his torso there's just big old gaps there and i can't yeah. do anything about it what is this and that and that's one thing and just as a quick side note that's one thing that i really don't like what they're doing with takara's photography is it's it's just not only is stuff not being shown but what's being shown, like Iron, we saw the first pictures of Ironhide. Remember how crappy those first pictures looked? Bad. So, so that help, that doesn't hurt either. But help either. But also the fact that you're going to you're going to have evergreen characters that Optimus, Megatron, Starscream, Bumblebee. You know, which is the this new Authentics line coming out. You've got, you know, it's going. Those are your basically your four core that the, the average casual fan they know who these are. You know, you know, they know they they might know who Soundwave is, or they might know so and so. But I mean, those are the four big ones, and you want them represented in the line they're currently in, obviously. So you know, whatever, like like Robots in Disguise, Bumblebee looked like Bumblebee from Robots in Disguise. It looked like the toy on the show for the most part. But when you get to these evergreen characters. That's when you can start doing a little differences. Like, for example, I'm using third party uh, Striker Manus, Ryder Megatron, and Striker Noir. Those are some very anime styled Optimus, Nemesis Prime, and Megatron. And you can have this different flavor. That this basically, basically something like, well, let's take Mighty Orbots, but do Transformers. And you get these really. Great looking designs, these an- these anime style designs, but you still recognize it being Optimus and Megatron and so forth. So I think, I think as long as the character is represented in the media they're best known for, that's the important thing. And then other lines or other manufacturers can do these different takes. But if you've got a, a comic book or you've got a series. And they put out a toy that doesn't look anything like the the way the characters are portrayed. This is my example: Rescue Bots. I liked Rescue. I watched Rescue Bots all four seasons. I liked Rescue Bots. It was a fun little show. It had some drama, but it came from the rescues, not the battles, which which is what they were. The main goal was. But the toys, I, I have one Rescue Bot. And that's Quick Shadow, because she was voiced by the by the same person who was River Song on Doctor Who. That's kind of why I have her. Spoilers, but I want Rescue Bot toys that look like the show. Now we may not get one that can triple tank like Heat Wave. We're not. We may not can get one that can do fire truck, fire boat, dinosaur, <laughs> and robot. All Whoa. in one, but we could get uh, we could eventually get Heat Wave in all those in in a generation style figure that would look like the show. 
and that's and that's why I didn't buy any more rescue bots. Is they just and again I know the target audience, but I think that's a big misstep on, on the part of Hasbro and Takara is not giving these characters more show accurate figures. But with the new show coming up, Rescue Bots Academy, maybe that'll change a little. But I'm not really holding out hope. But that, that's always, what I think. That's what I think. I was always really surprised by uh, Hasbro's decision never to have the rescue bot characters have an appearance in like prime or even in the RID, but, but RID because they're supposed but, to all be in the same universe. Right. But RID did appear in yeah. the rescue bot show. Although in their, although in different, although in their, in their RID body designs, mm-hmm. you know, because if you know, and again, this is part of it. If you notice, Nowhere in Rescue Bots do you ever hear the word Decepticon. The Decepti- you know, other than maybe one or two, one or two mentions, but it's never around the humans. So they're keeping that part aspect out of the, and maybe that has something to do with the toys. You you didn't want to have. That's why you had Tim Curry's Doctor Doctor Morbot or Doctor Doctor Morocco, because it's damn Tim Curry. It was fabulous anyway, but. Uh, you know, so yeah. As as long as as long as the character is actually portrayed in the media they're from, I think that's the most important thing. But but when you get characters like the the main ones, then you can do variants to for other looks like Optimus as he looks as a Ryan Pax or whatever the case may be. Well, what if we've gotten a masterpiece Soundwave that looks like Soundwave from the G One comic, Purple Wave? Yeah, yeah, think, like, well, like that was. Three or four that, different shades of purple. <laughs> yeah. Well, again, that that's like that's like coloring issues. I mean, I mean, because it, it, it was just the way the the ink and stuff. But yeah, I, I get I get what you you know, or you or maybe we can get like, I don't know, Jetfire with a Decepticon, you know, a, like a switchable symbol or something, you know. I do switchable symbol. That'd be great. Well, actually, doesn't Skyfire uh, fans toys? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah Fire, he's 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 got two different panels you can uh, swap out. Put on there. Yeah. yeah, that's what I like about that. Now, in Transformers, uh, back, back let's way back in the day, back in the eighties, um, we as fans and collectors, uh, even back then, toy accuracy or I'm I'm sorry, cartoon accuracy was always a topic of discussion. Uh, even back in 84, whenever the first cars uh, and trucks and, you know, cassette decks and guns and everything came out, we would play with these toys. And I remember my friends and I, we would be like, you know, Megatron, yeah, he turns into the gun that you see on the cartoon, but in robot form, he is, he barely looks like he does in the cartoon. I mean, his... His hips are widespread. He's short and stumpy. Uh, the gun barrel is off on his hips, not on his back. Uh, you know the 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 scope, which forms his arm arm cannon in robot mode, is flipping huge compared to the robot himself. You know, and that's that's all because of you know his gun mode. Uh, and then you've got um, Ironhide and Ratchet. You know, they look nothing like they did in the cartoon. Um, And a large part of that is because those toys, I think, came uh, where they came from Microman and Diaclone. Um, They, well, then again, the the cartoon came later, so that's not not really an argument. Um, You know, I was going to go down that... uh, go down that road well you know the toy uh, the cartoon came first but no the toys did come first uh so yeah. you can't use that argument they they had the toys to base them on but i think they just drew them in the cartoon to make them more um more relatable kind of like uh, michael bay did in the live action movies and i hate re- referencing this but in the live action movies uh they look like more they're more humanoid look uh, looking in in the robot forms to make them more relatable to a general audience. And I think that's part of the reason why the original cartoon, uh, they were drew the way they were drawn or drawn the way they're drawn, drawn, drawn. Yeah. (laughs) Speaking, it is hard. Um, 
But, you know, even back then, we were talking about cartoon accuracy. And then whenever the 86 uh, movie came out and we got into season three, some of the toys started looking a lot more like the cartoon did. You know, Cyclonus had the bunny ears and, you know, Scourge had, you know, even though he's blocky, he had the the sweeping wings and everything. Uh, you know, Rodimus Prime, you know, had the, they they had their, their specific looks, but then you had Galvatron that was completely different color and toy form. Um, I really can't explain that, you know, because the toys generally come first. So I don't, uh, outside of the relatability, I don't understand why they would change color, uh, on a character, you know, in Galvatron, for example. Um, uh, and like in Soundwave, I think in the comics, like you were talking, it was more of an ink issue as uh, as opposed to a color uh, color choice. Well, they had a lot of blue characters. They didn't want another blue character, so someone's yeah. got to be purple. Uh, so, you know, even back in the day, we were talking about cartoon accuracy. Um, it wasn't until, I guess, Animated was the first true to cartoon accurate toys that we really ever got i mean we had some redos of toys in generations mm. that i'd say energon and cybertron really those were rendered straight from yeah. the toys yeah I did. yeah, I, knew, <laughs> yeah. I didn't think well, of that. you can, for good you can or even for go good. as far as uh the original rid but that's a mm. that's a yes and a no there because it's, it's not a hundred percent like there was yeah, some cart- uh, cartoony aspects done, yeah. especially like uh, like the uh, the Beast guys, uh, 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 you know, Gas Gunk and Dark Scream, and everything. they they were more cartoony looking than their. Well, like the Spy Changers were definitely. Oh, oh def- yeah, 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 much different. Than... <laughs> but but then like, the, the, brothers the brothers were. Yeah. yeah. So that was even a hodgepodge. Team Bullet then. Train looked very accurate to the toys. So it's it's always been an issue whenever Transformers is being spoken of. Um, you know, we could go into the whole scale issue, but whenever we talk Transformers, scale really, uh, you know, I, every time somebody mentions it, uh, and, and this, this happened on Facebook in one of the groups that I'm a part of uh, the other day, somebody mentioned scale uh, in Transformers, and I just went yawn because it's you're never going to have a proper scale because of the way some of these characters are. We don't have real mass shifting, so we can't make a, a you know, a, a small character turn into a big robot the way it did in, in the media or I'm a still, large, like I'm still holding hope to a, an animated Omega Supreme, even if it's from a third party source. And I definitely don't want that to scale. Yeah. <laughs> Because that would be enormous. Not enormous. Well, I mean, you know, we've already got fans' toys, Terminus Diganicus. We've got DX9's Gabriel coming out. We have Yjang's Omega that has an actual motorized tank. But not animated, like Transformers animated. I know, I know. But I'm, but I'm saying these big, big scale figures do apparently sell because they're being done. They can do it. And I have to admit, and you know, Fans Toys Terminus Giganticus is probably the top end of where I, as, as big as I would go. Um, with yep. one exception, there is one exception I would accept if it was bigger than any other toy that we ever got. Can anybody Unicron. guess? Unicron. Supreme Clash Cheetor. No. <laughs> <laughs> A Unitron. <laughs> <laughs> a third party Supreme Supreme Class Cheetor. Uh, no, if if we got if we got a Unicron, for example, if it came from Fans Toys and they shipped it in four parts, I'd go for it. Uh, it it would be absolutely enormous. Uh, but it's Unicron. It's supposed to be huge. I would right. want it to tower over everything I have, including Terminus Giganticus. Yeah. Um, I'd go for that. Now, that would be the one exception. But I, you know, if if. They released sit in more city bots. They would need to be about Terminus Giganticus size, because if you get any bigger than that, it really where where does it go? Where does how, it go? How rough, because I've never seen the figure, but roughly, what's its size compared to like the okay. Generations Fort you, Max? You have Detoss behind you. 
Mm-hmm. Uh, my terminus giganticus. Uh, it takes uh, remove a detolf shelf and stand him on. Uh, I've got mine on the middle shelf. Uh, remove the top shelf, and he comes about three and a half inches from topping, uh, touching the top of the uh, the detolf. That's a big toy. That's a big toy. Yep. Uh, on, standing next to Fort Max, uh, uh, the Generations, or I'm sorry, Titan Returns Fort Max, um, I would say Fort Max's head comes to the top of Giganticus's head, uh, but then his wings, uh, Giganticus's wings, span up another four or five inches. Uh, mm-hmm. may, well, maybe three. I'm, I'm guessing four, just, just glancing up at it. So he he towers over everything, um, and yeah, weighs in at a hefty eleven pounds. What? But yeah, at the so when it comes to like scale stuff, for sure, like five five supreme class uh, generations figures in. I'm like, if they the more if they release any more of these, I don't have anywhere to put them. <laughs> so yeah, it's, yeah. And, and and you might be asking, you know, what what does you know, size have to do with you know toy versus cartoon versus comic? It has a lot to do with it because whenever you're trying to represent, for example, the cartoon, uh, and that's largely what a lot of our homages lean towards. Um, whenever you uh, whenever you try to homage the cartoon. Or, or any medium for that matter, you're going to want to have a, a standard. You know, how big is this character? Um, and whenever you're representing the cartoon, you know, and, and to represent it accurately, you're wanna, you want it to be a certain size. For example, Titan Devastator. Everybody wanted Devastator to be the biggest, uh, you know, the big, the, the big convi- combiner. And he is. I didn't. <laughs> um, yeah, Darn, I wanted to. One thing I was thinking when you were talking about that is that one thing we're going to run into is no matter if you want comic or if you want cartoon or if you want toy, whatever the case may be, one thing we're going to always have to remember is that there's always going to be something better, no matter which one you pick, because. Look at look at when Universe first came out with Sideswipe and you know that first wave. We thought this is it. These are brand new versions. This is as good as it's going to get. Then we get Masterpiece. This is as good as we're going to get with Sideswipe. Then we get an anime version of Sideswipe, which is even closer in some degrees with the resculpted heads. So. And eventually, all this stuff is going to cycle back on itself. People are going to look at in five years down the road. Okay, this side swipe is old now. Let's see what we can do with current technology to make it well, even better. We're and already we're with that about with placeholders, Optimus, right? Yeah. Well, that's, that's true. The placeholder thing. But the only the only way you're ever going to have the best version of your character or your toy is to try and travel ahead right before you die. Buy whatever the last toy they did of that character, time travel back, and you're going to have the best Enjoy. character. Yeah, you know that that's well, the way you're, you're going to get the best character. And, well, it's always it's always going to be evolving. L- let's look at exactly what makes your preference in this in this argument: toy versus tune versus comic. Uh, you know, growing up, I played with the toys. They were they were my thing. Uh, and I watched the cartoon. I wished that they, they looked like the cartoon, but I didn't mind it. They were the toys. They were fun to play with. Now, as an adult, I don't necessarily play with the toys. Uh, you know, I'll get them down and mess with them. I guess that would be considered playing with them. Um, but I don't, you know, have little play battles. I don't so much worry about the play value of them. I want them to look right. And my medium of preference is the cartoon because, like we've spoken about in previous cart, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, previous episodes of TFYLP, uh, I lean toward the cartoon as my canon of choice because as I was growing up, even though I read 
the Marvel comics, um, the cartoon resonated more with me. Mm-hmm. Uh, I watched the cartoon uh, daily. It was it was what characterized those characters for me. So as an adult, whenever I want the best quote unquote the best version of a character, you know, like you know, this is the best scourge out there. I don't care what people say about X Transbots. X Transbots Andros is the best scourge out there. Uh, there's nobody else that has a scourge. Um, my opinion, Fans Toys Sovereign is the best Galvatron out there. Uh, you know, that being said, DX9's Tyrant is a very close second. Uh, it has some, uh, some, some appearance issues that like the feet i didn't care for the feet on it but overall it was a very nice looking toy um and i want the i want my characters to look as much like the original cartoon as possible now like i alluded to earlier on i understand that whenever you talk about i want it to look like the cartoon i understand the original cartoon was very rife with uh, animation errors, but for the general appearance of, of a character in the cartoon, that's what I'm speaking of. You know, Optimus Prime in general always looked a certain way. You know, Megatron always looked a certain way. Um, you know, there might be scenes where he might be colored wrong, or you know, he might have uh, Starscream's head and uh, everything like that. That's that's fewer and far between. But whenever I think of a character, I want that version of it. Now, if I I understand, there's some people, uh, especially in the UK, they grew up. The UK was uh, the comics were very, very, very heavily influencing over there. Uh, and I understand that a lot of people there prefer the comic uh, look. Now, I'm not saying everybody does. But I find that a lot of people over there like the comic appearance. Um, although we don't have very many toys, and this is this is interesting, we don't have very many toys, if any, that reference the original Marvel comic appearance of Transformers. They reference if they reference a comic, it's usually the IDW version. If you notice that, there's one. Oh, is, there is one. It's an Easter egg, like I was talking about earlier. Universe Two Ratchets license plate. Help me. Help us. Or yeah. help us. Yes. <laughs> yes. Um, so there are you know little little. But there nods is a G two comic book character. Yes. Yeah. Masterpiece Sobswat. G two Sobswat. Mm-hmm. Which you can get an upgrade set that makes him look even more like that I with the bandolier. It. It's worth it. Yeah. <laughs> um yeah. so, so Michael whenever we, whenever you're talking about aesthetics, you, you know, you you I know you said earlier that Beast Wars cartoon the uh, the television show was what influenced you more. You want your characters uh to uh, to be more inspired by that. Uh, can you expound on that some more? Oh well, yeah, I mean so a lot of the media that I grew up with, I mean, Beast Wars already, um, they didn't have comic books. I mean, it was just show. So, um, I mean, my preference is, I mean, there's really not much of a preference there. Is it leans show because that was the only media. Um, though, like, I ab- I absolutely love the Optimus that came out. That looks like the toy, and it came with the stuff to make it look like the toy. That, I mean, it's f- fantastic, and I mutant face, all that. Yeah. I am like Love super it. hyped for Shadow Panther, um, because he's coming with the mutant face and all that stuff, just like that. Um, so, like, I, I, I have a, I love the toys as well, but I mean, with. With the original Beast Wars line, I still I was never like I wish this looked more like the show because they were close enough approxima- approximations that it never really occurred to me how different they were. Um, 
especially once you got to fusors and transmetals, they were nearly identical. Um, but because with, at that so, point didn't weren't the weren't the uh, the studio and Hasbro working even more in tandem with yeah uh, with appearance uh, so the appearances because I know whenever Beast Wars first started there was like a lag between Hasbro and the studio so that's why yeah. some of the the characters didn't appear as because yeah, if you read a lot of the first two years of Beast Wars figures which is all the um non transmetals stuff everything before transmetals a lot of the bios are very uh have nothing they have nothing to do with the show um some of the characters are even portrayed very differently like waspinator um yep. he's like in his bio he was portrayed more like a starscream type than he was the goofball that he was in the show and then in the show um, he was actually possessed by starscream <laughs> <laughs> yeah but uh yeah, much, it wasn't much until, it like wasn't another character. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't until that second season that the they sort of lined up with each other, and then the bios on the back of the card were still were very close to what was happening in the show. Uh, not a hundred percent, but it was close enough. Um, but yeah, so for me, when it when it at least comes to like my Beast Wars collection, I mean. Uh, the movie or the masterpiece stuff that's coming out that looks straight like the 3D models is absolutely fantastic. But at the same time, it, the if I got something that like a a Razor Beast that looks like he does from the IDW comic, I'd be ecstatic. Um, but that's like a very small chunk of Beast Wars history. Is those IDW comics that came out at this point. What was that? I don't know. Twelve years ago, or something like that, <laughs> or more. A, I'd yeah, say it's, it's probably closer time. to fifteen. Two thousand six. It was the two. Oh, was it yeah. six? Yeah, because the because yeah they packaged it with the tenth uh, anniversary. anniversary. I was Gosh, I, I was thinking of the uh, of the Dreamwave uh, yeah. comics that they that they released wasn't like two thousand two or so. So they only ever released a. The, like, the summer special thing yeah the summer special and uh that was because it, it was a vote for whether you wanted them to do a beast wars comic an rid comic and i can't remember what the third one was it might have been just those two i voted for rid <laughs> i did i did too i did too <laughs> don why am i not uh, surprised <laughs> you know, you know at the time it would have been a hard vote for a young uh, Michael Swift because I loved both of them <laughs> quite a bit. Do you have uh, a, do you have a leaning now more one way or the other or do you still love them equally? Um I mean now it's just like heavily beast wars um like I love RID but I it's like your, it's your beast G1. Wars. Yeah, so I mean my my goal like Beast Wars, I'm going to focus on that first, and then, you know, I might I'll go into R.E.D. after that, but there's a lot in the R.E.D. toy line that's just like, meh. Um, like, I don't feel very strongly for the G1 molds or anything, even though I think I own, like, three different versions of Ruination. Um, but, uh, like... When this set came out, like I had to get it because it was like, oh, this is going to look awesome with oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. all Incredible. the R.I.D. figures that uh, you're holding up the tiny little combiner. United Warriors Baldigus is what he was holding up for the audio vis- uh, listeners. Oh yeah, sorry about that. Um, but then, it, so I mean, I, I mostly prefer the show because my three big. Uh, collections when it comes to transformers is beast wars rid and animated which all really were just show properties they didn't have anything else but uh i had to say like every time something comes out with a hint of comic to it like there was the uh 
a subscription service, uh, Thunderwing. And its combined mode had that very comic book looking face. Yeah. I was like, I, I loved it. Because it just looked like it jumped right out of the comic. And, and it, I think it's mostly just because they don't do it enough. Like, I feel like with the Masterpiece figures, they've been coming out with so many accessories for these guys that, like, why haven't they started throwing in, like, a little bit of, you know, comic book stuff? Like, Megatron, if he had a black helmet. Like, it wouldn't be perfect. I'm, but... su- I'm surprised there's not more uh, comic influence on uh, some of the toys today. Uh, you know, I know, for example, like the Little Legends Prime from several years back, they had the split... Uh, split chest um that was remolded into huffer and pipes um yeah you know it was heavily based on the uh, the idw incarnation of optimus prime you know he had the angled uh, shoulders uh and the split level or the split windowed chest uh revealing the autobot symbol in the middle um that is very idw comics um we don't get a whole lot of that anymore um R.I.D. Skybite in the Generations line uh, had um, a very cartoon look to him, the way he was painted, but the way the toy was curved, much like the Cybershark R.I.D. Um, Skybite mold from from uh, toys, uh, the the toy line way back when, um, you know, it, it had very heavy toy influences on it. So, outside of the Masterpiece line, you don't see a whole lot of strictly one genre. You know, they yeah. pull from all kinds of genres. You did for like a very, like for a very short time there when the IDW comics were being packaged inside of the figures. Um, yeah, you skid- got- yeah. Yeah, you got you got some that looked like they did in the IDW comic book and like I I I know I collected a or I kept a bunch of the ones that were you know main characters in like more than meets the eye because I love that comic book. Um but they they mostly got away from that. Well, I guess the bigger thing now is that IDW is more just like was using what Hasbro was using. And not the other way around. Yeah. Um, I'm going to take this time right now, and I'm going to cut away to the interviews that I did earlier today uh, at the uh, Transformers Kentucky meetup uh, here in Louisville, and uh, uh, let you guys watch that. And then whenever we come back, we'll uh, finish up this topic of uh, cartoon versus toy versus comic, and what you think is the future of this um i'm going to cut away now and we'll be back here personally i like the blend like we had in the early toys where it was some uh cartoon influence but more detailed realistic toy inspired also i personally like the toys because i think that the cartoon looks a little bit more shittily and fucked up <laughs> or the comic in the cartoon. <laughs> so, uh, what, what makes you uh, like the uh, comics over the other aesthetics oh, okay. in the toys? Uh, I kind of like original, it's original and fresh. Fresh, yeah. <laughs> I like the G1 comics so much and the way Scorponok is portrayed in that that I would want a comic version. Actually, I would like throwback comics. So it's cool that they're making the IDW, you know, our artists nowadays, but I would like, you know, Jeff Sr. People like that to see throwback comic adaptations of some guys would be cool. I don't think you can sustain a line on it, but as far as like a guy that doesn't really buy a lot of third party, that would really get me interested. You know, somebody made an under base look at Starscream. You know, something nutty like that. I'd be way into that. Or the way Power Master Optimus Prime looked because he had a very specific way he was drawn. He had that weird half a garbage can looking head. I don't know why that's so great. And when he's combined 
it's like that's nothing like the toy in my head and I would sit there and draw it man if someone made a toy that was basically it would be a shirt pants combiner thing maybe with the trailer because he had no kibble nowhere it just attached at the waist of these big blue so basically you want an Energon Power Master Optimus Prime <laughs> yeah well kind of but anything that would look like something from the US Marvel G1 run or even UK whatever because I'm big into that now I would really like that but if you're saying what's your vote on a masterpiece in general, um, just pick a lane. Don't go back and forth from animated to toy to what, you know what I'm saying? That's all. Just be consistent. All right. so. I'm all about the, the original G1 cartoons, so that looks like okay, that. Okay, because it's animated. I wish I could see some yeah. love for mainframe and Rad who do action masters and never had an actual like transformer toy. I would love to see don't. that. The one, the one that awesome. Oh, it gives me the question. Uh, what do you like best, the toy, cartoon, or uh, comic aesthetic on the, uh, in the uh, Masterpiece line? Uh, masterpiece line, character by character, when it came to um, Megatron, I like his IDW backstory and even um, motivation and that kind of stuff. I mean, the writings that they have in IDW are really cool, but I'm always going to be the show, it's going to be the number one thing that I want. Um, the that's first and foremost, and even to the point where like the movie of '86 is going to be like the main image that I want you to capture. It's it's scene by scene, it's, it's moments that I want captured. But I'd say show number one, IDW second. I don't know old comics very well, so I wouldn't know that one. I like to, to the dog. And the the dog see them go the original G one form. Like the masterpiece, the way they're going now for the original oh God, show so look, cool. animated. Dude, I did at first friends. like the more real world look, but I've always wanted them to do an original G1 cartoon straight up uh, version of every character. At least the G1 first, first season, it's the original one. All right, we're back, and uh, you know the lovely of idi video editing. <laughs> um, you know, it's actually been a few seconds for us, but it's been several minutes for you viewers and listeners. It's magic, magic. <laughs> um, but what do you think, Don? What do you think is the future of uh, of toy aesthetic? Is it uh, are, are future toys going to be strictly? Uh, show oriented or do you think we're going to see more uh melds or original designs uh i think it's really going to depend on what shows currently running the budgetary concerns at the time for hasbro uh resources oil and all that kind of stuff and also they're looking at possible repaint potentials from Sakara and Hasbro. And the reason I'm saying that is because during Generations, they made the toys with repaints in mind. With extra heads, like Perceptor had the reflector head that we never really got. At least on that body, anyway. And with Masterpiece, we're seeing them doing cartoon, you know, we're seeing, we're seeing like toy-accurate colors then when they go back and do show accurate colors, uh, if you look at the even though the even though the Takara Legends line is a little uh, iffy right now as being exclusive retailers, the uh, Autobot clones were done in the animation with the pinks and the reds, versus ours was just the toy, red and cream. So yes, I know. Yes, yes I know. <laughs> Uh, so, I think what they're going to be looking at, especially with, and, and this is going to sound bad, it's like, Michael, you're looking forward to Shadow Panther. For me, that is the easiest pass on a Masterpiece figure, probably of the entire line. Because there's not enough there for me to double dip on that mold when I know some version of Tigertron will probably be coming, not the same mold exactly because of the structural differences between a cheetah and a tiger, but the same basic engineering and the same yeah. basic layout will be there. 
So I think we're going to be seeing, you know, more toy accurate and then repaints into anime accurate or vice versa. Uh, I think we're going to see, like, for example, the Inferno. I, I figure at some point we're going to see an Inferno that's more toy accurate where they've added some of this detail, at least to the legs, to get it looking more toy accurate. See, Duran, you and I went with Hellfire and Grapple. I mean, mm-hmm. and Wrestle. Because to us, that was more of the way the character should be with the details of the fire truck on the legs and stuff. I didn't care for the super smooth look of Inferno. Yes, it was animation accurate, but it wasn't a very, it, it did not capture the spirit of that to me. Uh, also, the fact that depending on what oil does, you know, they might go with the safe bet. You know, so so you know w- what's more popular with this character? Oh, it's the cartoon they came from. So we're going to get that, and then may again maybe later they might say, okay, we need to repaint. Well, we can do that one in a different look. Um, so it's going to be a lot of variables, but I think we're going to see a lot of. And, and and whether it's good or bad, you're going to be seeing a lot of things like the Optimus Primal repaint that we got uh, not long after the first one came out. So you're going to be seeing different versions of these same characters with some nuanced differences. But it's like, it, to me, it's like Sun Surge versus Sunstreaker. Is it worth paying the extra money to go from this as a placeholder to the real one when you just bought toy accurate sideswipe and now they got anime accurate sideswipe. They did the same thing with Red Alert. So you're going to have to. All I'm going to say on that thought process is where's my red Optimus Primal? Thank you. Well, you know, I, I will see. <laughs> so, I agree, but stuff like that I think you'll be seeing as Wonderfest exclusives. You know, store E-hobby. exclusive e hobby. I, mean, I need universe colors off this primal. That's I was going to say that. I was going to say that because that is such a weird looking Optimus Primal. It's perfect. I, I'm burning honest, convoy. Any color that they paint that in, I'm going to buy it. Yeah, but okay. But this is this <laughs> is what I you know this is what I'm going to say as 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 a, as a finish up. It's going to be a matter of is what I'm seeing here now what I want. Or do I want to hope they do something better not long down the road and we get a more accurate Inferno or a more accurate Grapple? That's why I'm with Artfire. Artfire had no comic or... I mean, he might have had some manga uh, uh, inspirations there, but he had no actual cartoon. So I didn't mind the smooth look on him because the character really had no major representation other than just... He was an Inferno recolor. Hmm. So th- that smoothness didn't really bother me on Artfire, but it did on Inferno and Grapple. It's just all of us as collectors are going to have to wait and see, okay, this is a nice version. Take it on a piece-by-piece piece basis. Exactly, because they could very well do in six months. I mean, in six months, we might get Grimlock Dinobot. Well, what if, what if sometime down the road we got... Uh, and maybe not just in not in masterpiece, but what if we got an entirely new line, uh, much in the vein of generations, but instead of going very comic inspired or very toy, I mean, I'm, I'm sorry, very cartoon inspired. What if they lean toward the original toy? Let's say if they bring back, you know, Generation One Optimus Prime. Let's uh, okay, he's going to look like the '79 Freightliner cab over. Uh, and he's going to look very much like the original toy, but he's going to have a whole lot more posability. You know, do you think they will ever do something like that, or do you think no? See, at this point, I honestly don't think I don't think you can ever say, "Oh, they're not going to do that." We're getting a masterpiece Dinobot complete with magic powder to transform it, because apparently, I still think magic is involved in some fashion with that figure. It may be black magic, but it's still magic nonetheless. Uh, it's just that he's got a chest this thick if you look at him from the side. <laughs> but oh, does yeah, he? Yeah, yeah he's, just, gotta, he's, he's pretty wide. Yeah. But. Mm. At this point, I wouldn't, I wouldn't write it. I mean, we got... 
I got her. RC. I got I got RC after twenty plus years of asking. A headmaster is, RC at that. Exactly. There is nothing that is off the table at this point, except maybe new Kiss players. I oh, don't. I was about think to say Kiss going, players. I don't think we're going to see that again. But you never know. I doubt we'll ever get a manga Transmetals Air Razor. No. And if you've never seen it, look it up. I'm afraid to look it up. You should be. Yeah, she and Silverbolt have a. Uh, no, he and Silverbolt have a. Uh, he and Tigertron. Well, so it, he's a he and their version of the cartoon, but in the they had a manga that the uh, Air Razor was actually female. Oh, okay. And they accentuated parts. Uh, I mean, yeah, a, a bit. <laughs> it's worse than what they're doing currently in like the United comics. The, the Legends comics, yeah. It's yeah, about the, the same comics. as that. Yeah. So, Christian, where do you see the line going? What do you see the future of uh, aesthetic? I think for generations or classics or whatever that becomes later, I think we'll continue to see a modernized amalgam of previous styles. And in Masterpiece, I think, depending on designer, it could go either way. With more figures like Inferno, or more figures like Sunstreaker, who seems to be a return to form, or uh, definitely the Beast Wars figures will continue to look like the cartoons. Michael? Yeah, I think Takara has sort of proven, and or expressed and proven their intent with the Masterpiece line to focus pretty much on cartoon accuracy. Um, because, like, all the Masterpiece G1 stuff lately, Beast Wars, Masterpiece, it's all, like, slavish to the cartoons. Um, but uh, I, I agree with the thought on the Generations line and that we'll probably continue to see some sort of mash of all sorts of aspects um, right now, they sort of seem like they're focusing maybe on a little more, like, paying homage to the original toys while giving you a, like, super modernized version of it. Um, at least in my opinion, I felt, that's how I felt, at least with, like, the, or not power core, uh, power the, the combiners problems. and the, uh, and Prime Masters and all that stuff, Titan Masters. Um, it seemed like they were sort of trying to be a little more toy than cartoon, but sort of accentuate both. Um, so, I, and I think we'll just continue to see that with uh, with that line, um, and especially even more so now since Takara is not is supposedly not going to be retooling everything and re repainting everything to try to unify the brand uh, internationally. I can see this going over like a fart in church, especially in the <laughs> master line, uh, master priest line. You know, it's uh, because that's, that's been to cars, bread and butter for, for many, many years is the masterpiece line and getting retools and stuff. I mean, Hasbro has imported, very little of the masterpiece line at this well, point. Now, you know, this could also be one gigantic smoke screen. They're saying they're not going to do it. They're going to do it in limited fashion. They're basically going to be upping up the demand on their own to make it not as prevalent. So people will be like, well, I want this. I want this because I don't know when I'm going to get it again. So basically, they're they're making their own shortage of a sort of these better quote unquote figures. So it's well, I know. also wonder how much of that is uh, to help prevent KOs. You know, the, uh, the 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 working more in sync with Hasbro. You know, you're you're not working on these external pieces. I don't know if that has anything to do with it. I, it's it's a thought. 
Yeah. You know, maybe cut down on KOs lead uh, and maybe some lead time. Uh, you know, these third parties putting out characters, uh, you know, being first to market as it were yeah. on things. Well, it also could be the, it also could be the convert converse converse is that since that Takara is not doing these figures, third party may step in and say, "Okay, you're not getting Buster and Hydra apparently. Here's our Buster and Hydra," and they'll and they'll say, "Okay, we'll we'll go in and make these figures that you know. Here's your G two Dinobots." Or whatever the case may be. Still waiting for third party Darkwing and Dreadwind, aka also Buster and Hydra. I think I would double dip on on both of those. If they did like a masterpiece style of those. Oh yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm talking dirty right now. Well they're <laughs> so their unified angle I thought only extended to like the generations line and not necessarily masterpiece. Like maybe masterpiece movie. Because that's being sold internationally, like in the same boxes. Um, but yeah, I thought it was mostly just the what we dubbed Generations line that they were talking about. It's, it's possible, a, but uh, yeah. I have fears that it may extend to Masterpiece as well. Well, because most of the Masterpiece stuff, like when was the last time a Masterpiece figure released in America that wasn't the new movie stuff? Uh, the last Bumblebee original streak? mold was probably Blue Streak, yeah, and that's been what at least two years, I think. Yeah, it was since that, uh, that happened, and that was what like they were M so expensive. MP, no one MP seventeen, I think, what it is, and we're on thirty nine now. Uh huh. So you know, America or the Western market is is lagging way behind on masterpieces, and now that there's a lot of Toys R Uses that are being shut down corporately, um the avenue to bring those over here is shrinking unless they offer it through Hasbro uh, Hasbro toy shop which or or the unknown I am, club I am absolutely perplexed why Hasbro does not offer those uh, things through Hasbro toy shop you know masterpieces um, you know, just uh, label them as adult collectibles, you know, just like they do in Toys R Us. Well, Hasbro Toy Shop's not necessarily Hasbro, I thought. Well, it's, it's, it's not, but I'm saying that's kind of like, yeah. they bought They're the avenue. rights to call themselves that, and it, it's and short of having a uh, collector's club, you know, that's been mentioned from time to time, you know, short of having that, it's the best way to get people to go to a website and pick this stuff yeah. up. Yeah, it does. Yeah, uh, but I, I'm just, I was just thinking that's probably the one reason why maybe it hasn't happened. It's just the whatever like actually separates Hasbro from Hasbro Toy Shop. But yeah, well, I believe we've uh, kind of talked this into the ground tonight, and I again apologize profusely uh, profusely uh for our technical issues uh that we had this evening um hopefully this uh pre-recorded version uh is much better and uh, i will get it up as soon as i possibly can um you know next week uh, we'll try to go live again all we can do is try um you know that's as it is in the live video realm you know, I, I don't understand how Twitch and all that stuff works. You know, people are able to stream live while they're al also playing online, and it's like I've I've done it for my PlayStation Four, and it's it's almost uh, stream uh, seamless. I mean, it's smooth. But yet here we are trying to do a video podcast, and we're just sending out one signal. <laughs> and, it, well, and it doesn't work beastly computers uh and the fastest internet you could possibly buy and i know you have at least one of those <laughs> yeah i've i've got the fastest internet i can get here well i i can go up 100 100 meg more but it's not really necessary um you, you have know, more than enough i have more than enough but it's my computer it's pushing 10 years old so you know, it's a mid-2010 model, which you figure they were first released probably late 2009, early 2010. Uh, you know, it's 
you know, it's we're getting there. <laughs> I'm surprised it's able to kick as long as it has. But anyway, uh, check out our Twitter at TFYLP. Uh, also, our Facebook group at facebook.com slash groups slash TFYLP. Uh, also, our Patreon, patreon.com slash TFYLP. If you love what we do, you can go on there and uh, give us a little bit each month to help continue. It helps pay the internet bill. You know, I, matter of fact, uh, yesterday, no, day before yesterday, I paid the internet bill from our Patreon because I needed to pay some other things. So, <laughs> you know, it helps this show keep going. And unfortunately tonight it failed. <laughs> but that's not that's not my not my problem. Not my problem. It's a lot spectrum. Yeah. Next time gadget. Yeah. I say that all oh, someone who also suffers with spectrum. Well, <laughs> it, it it happens even whenever I'm playing online. I play Call of Duty uh, almost religiously, and there's sometimes that I I'll have a red a red ping on there, and I'm like, why? I have 200 meg internet. What is going on here? The spectrum. Yep. It's spectrum. Uh, but anyway, uh, check out tftalk.net, our host website, our main website. Uh, I try to keep it update, uh, updated. I've started working on the news, get some new, uh, new news up there. I'm going to be trying to work on revamping the uh, photographs session, uh, section uh, where you can pull up high-resolution photos of Transformers and third-party toys, um, get some better content up there. But anything TFYLP, you can find it on tftalk.net. Please check it out today. Uh, if you love this show, uh, please subscribe on our uh, YouTube channel, on iTunes, however you consume this show. Uh, and we thank each and every one of you uh, for your support. As everybody is standing here looking at me like Duran just shut up and end the show, I am going to end the show by dragging it out even farther <laughs> Good night, everybody. Stop. We'll see you Good night, next everybody. Week. Take care. Bye. Happy Valentine's Day. Yes. Buy, buy, lo buy love one stuff and, and get laid. See ya. Oh. Classy.